Hi guys, this is Anu. So I will be talking today about the formula mass and the molecular mass. I'm following the book OpenStax Chemistry Chapter 3 and also there is another OpenStax book by the name of Atoms that is Chapter 6. So this is an open source uh, initiative provided by the Rice University. So let's look at what is the molecular mass and what is the formula mass. The molecular mass is a term that applies to um, the bonds that are formed by the sharing of the electrons and these are the molecular compounds are formed. So when the two nonmetals combine together, for example, when one atom of chlorine combines with another atom of chlorine and we will see a molecule of chlorine is formed, which is Cl2. One atom of oxygen combines with another atom of oxygen gives you O2. Right, And so when they are formed, these, these covalent bonds that are formed by the sharing of the electrons, the electrons are actually never leaving the neutral atom. The electrons stay with the atom, and so the mass of the atom does not change. On the other hand, when you look at the formula mass, the formula mass is formed when a metal is combined with a non-metal. So a metal gives away the electrons and forms a cation. A non-metal takes in the electrons and forms an anion. So this transferring of electrons creates the ionic bond. The metals gets a positive charge, the non-metals gets a negative charge. For example, sodium combining with sodium, sorry, combining with chlorine. So sodium gives away that one electron from sodium plus ion. And chlorine takes in the one electron and forms a chloride ion with one negative charge. Now here, because the electron has actually left the atom, that is why you're going to have the sodium cation is going to be slightly smaller in weight or lighter in weight than the neutral sodium atom. Similarly, the chloride ion, because it has accepted that one, one electron, it's going to be slightly heavier. And again, this is going to be only very slightly. Slightly, it's not going to be um, a lot of difference it's going to be a slight difference. And so that difference is still going to be there. So it's slightly heavier and slightly lighter is because the electron has actually left the atom, okay? So that's why that distinction, in order to incorporate that distinction, we have this formula mass and the molar mass. So, so molecular mass, and not the molar mass, but the molecular mass. Molecular mass applies to the covalent compounds and the Formula mass applies to the ionic compounds. That's the only difference, okay? Now, how do we calculate them? So let's look at the molecular mass. The molecular mass, for example, this is a learning check problem. And this is, we are calculating the molecular mass of the acetaminophen molecule. Now here, something very important, you need to understand that it's very important that you memorize the symbols of the elements as they are shown in the periodic table. It's very important you memorize them because you won't be able to understand what is this, what is this, what is this, and what is this without actually memorizing it. But for now, if you haven't memorized, you should start memorizing. If You also have to memorize the periodic table. But at the same time, you should also know how to read a periodic table and know what is where. So we are going to talk about that later, but let's just look at first, what does C stand for? C stands for carbon. H stands for hydrogen, N stands for nitrogen, and O stands for oxygen, okay? So in this molecule, we see that there are eight carbons, nine hydrogens, one nitrogen, and two oxygens. Now we are going to calculate the molecular mass of this molecule. So we are going to look at the periodic table. And in the periodic table, as you know, that there are um, two, um, there are, um, um, the elements which have uh, are symbols, right? These symbols and these symbols are um, these symbols have two numbers. One is the atomic number, and the other is the um, one is the atomic number, and the other is the mass number. What is the atomic number? Atomic number relates to the number of protons, and that is the identity of the atom. Mass number is the weight of the atom, which relates to the number of protons. That is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And that is the weight of the atom. So in this case, this is the weight of carbon. So the weight is basically the average of the isotopes of uh, that particular element. 
that is that we see in the periodic table. That is why we keep the the isotopic abundance, right? We keep the abundance of the isotopes also into calculations. So that's why we have the weights as shown in the periodic table. Those weights are in the form of um, um, you know are, are are with decimals points. Okay. So anyway, so now we are going to look at the uh, doing these calculations. Uh, so from the periodic table, we see carbon, the, the mass number of carbon is 12. The mass number of hydrogen is 1. Mass number of nitrogen is 14. And the mass number of oxygen is 16. Okay, so let's do the calculations now. Okay, so now when we do the calculations, 8 atoms of carbon times 12, or that's the mass number of each carbon, the weight comes out to be 96. So 12 times 8, 96. Similarly, 9 times 1, 9. 1 times 14, 14. 2 times 6, 6 2 times 16, 32. You add up all this, it comes to be 151 atomic mass units. So always it's very important to put the units. So this is how you calculate the weight of a molecular compound. Next, we are going to look at the formula mass, which is the mass of the um, mass of the um, ionic compound. And here we have example of calcium phosphate. So the calcium phosphate given is, um, so let me write this down. This is the formula mass. And this formula mass is of Ca3 brackets PO4 whole twice. So that's calcium, calcium phosphate. Okay. So calcium phosphate is, um, it's an ionic compound. It's uh, basically anti-caking agent that is used in the food products. So it's the, it's, uh, so here we see, first of all, you're going to write down how many atoms are there in this molecule. So we see that there are three calcium atoms. So remember that three applies to calcium. This two applies to phosphorus and this two applies to oxygen. Once again, it's very important you know how to recognize the elements by their symbols. So memorize the symbols of the elements. Symbols of the elements. And if you haven't done so, then you know it's time to start doing it. Okay, so the, in this, um, in this um, ionic compounds, three atoms of carbons are there, two atoms of phosphorus are there, and two times four atoms of oxygen are there, okay? So we see that there are eight oxygens and two phosphorus and three calciums. Now we are going to look at the weight of these. So I'm going to write down three calciums times the weight of calcium. Again, you're going to look in the periodic table. You're going to see where calcium is. Calcium is in group 2A and the weight given is 40. 40.08 and it's okay to you just put it as 40. Next comes the phosphorus. The weight of phosphorus is 30.97. So we have two phosphorus and the weight of each is 30.97. It's okay to put it as 31. Next comes the uh, weight of 8 times, two fours are 8, times oxygen. Each oxygen is 16. Okay, so now we are going to do the math and Okay, so now we see that the three atoms of carbon times 40, 120. Two atoms of phosphorus times 31, 62. Eight atoms of oxygen times 16 is 128. So this comes out to be 310 atomic mass units. Okay, so this is how you do the calculations for the uh, formula mass and the uh, molecular mass. And um, we can similarly look at a few other difficult examples which um, I'm going to just come up from my own side. Uh, let us look at this guy. N, H, 4, whole thrice, and P, O, 4. All right, so first of all, this is made up of the name. As you write the names and the symbols and the names of the, the compounds, right? So this is ammonium, ammonium, phosphate. Okay, so ammonium phosphate is, um, 
we will see that this three, which is outside the brackets or the parentheses, this applies to nitrogen and this also applies to hydrogen. Okay, phosphorus, if you have, if you don't have anything over here, this means just one. Okay, and this four applies to oxygen. So with that said, in this molecule, we have three nitrogens. We have four, uh, uh, three times four hydrogens and we have a one phosphorus and we have four oxygens. And so this is going to be, sorry, let's just do this here. This is going to be, we see that three nitrogens, each nitrogen is from the periodic table, the mass number of nitrogen is 14.01. Okay, and so now here, I'm also going to now, let's say we want to be very exact. Let's say we want to follow the, um, you know, uh, like sometimes we need to really, uh, you know, apply the significant figures. So, significant figures, the rules regarding the significant figures. So, if we want to be very exact, so this is the number we get from the periodic table, um, that 14.01, you write that down. Next, we are going to look at the um, hydrogen. So, there are three fours are 12 hydrogens total. So 12 hydrogens and each is weighing 1.008, um, okay? Then comes the phosphorus. One phosphorus and the weight of the phosphorus from the periodic table is 30.97. And oxygens, there are four oxygens and the weight of each oxygen according to the, um, the one that I have is 15.99. So we are just trying to be more exact. If the question say, show your answer based on the, you know, the correct number of significant figures. So we have to use those. Otherwise, general for general calculations, you know, you, it's okay to round up the way I've shown here initially. Okay. But now if they are looking at the significant figures, particularly, you know, being trying to be more precise, then that's what it is. Okay. So anyway, so you take these numbers and now you get there get the um, answer. So, um, okay, so when we did the math, we find that the three atoms of nitrogen times 14, 42.03, 12 atoms of hydrogen times 1.08, each of them is 12.096 for phosphorus, it's only one, so 30.97, and then four atoms of oxygen times 15.99 is going to give you 63.96. So when you add the whole thing, it comes out to be 149.056. Okay, so now your question initially was that we need to apply the rules regarding the significant figures and get the answer uh, to the correct number of significant figures. So the rule for addition, so the rule of the sig figs, so the rule of the sig figs, when we are doing the addition or when you're doing the subtraction, or when you're doing the subtraction is that you are going to be looking at the lowest decimal point for your final answer. The lowest decimal point for, your, for the final answer will have the lowest decimal point. Okay, so the final answer, we should have the lowest decimal point. The another rule is when you're doing the multiplication, multiplication and the division. At that time, the, we are going to look at the lowest significant figures, lowest significant figures in the, um, in the final answer. Okay, so these are the two basic differences when you are adding, subtracting, and when you are multiplying and dividing. So in this case, we multiplied. Now again, these are the exact number. This is, this is an exact number. 12 is an exact number. One is an exact number and four is an exact number. So these exact numbers are kind of ruled out when we are multiplying and dividing and we're trying to get, because it doesn't make sense otherwise. So here it's going to be, so you just leave the, because this is just, um, so we will just leave it as 14.01. Uh, we're going to just take this, this and these many significant figures and we're going to just leave the answer to the, 
you know, to that many significant figures that work. But when you're adding your final answer, in this case, we see there are two decimal points, two decimal points, there are three decimal points, there are two decimal points, and there are two decimal points. So your final answer should have the two decimal points instead of three. So what are you going to do? You are going to, in this case, round up. So in this, this becomes 149.06 atomic mass unit. Okay, so six to five is rounded up because, because this number that you are dropping, it's sixes, six is more than five. So therefore you will be rounding up. Okay, but in chemistry, <laughs> don't round down because that means you are really uh, reducing the matter. And that's uh, not the ideal thing to do, especially when you are actually taking the weight and you need that much, you know, it's even a small amount, a small amount can contain several, several, several thousands of atoms. So rounding down is not a very, you know, feasible uh, thing to do in chemistry, but for calculations, you know, just stick to either rounding up or leave the numbers as they are. So this was your little, you know, explanation on how to do the calculations. And we are going to be looking at next at the molar masses. The, that is the mass of one mole that relates to one mole. So in olden days, you know, formula weight or the molecular weight were used, but now we use molar mass. And we are going to be doing it in our next, um, you know, in the next, uh, next video. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching.